Well, hi, thanks for joining me here in my shop. So, uh, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to reinstall this capacitor resistor uh, grid leak combination here back in the radio. And I'm also going to put these copper shields back on, and then we're going to test out the radio. Uh, what I did off camera was I completed the let's call it re-insulating of some of these wires that are passing through this aluminum plate. So all the wires passing through ha have all been uh, protected if you like or re-insulated so there's no chance now of any short circuit type problem between any of the uh, six, six, seven or eight wires that pass through here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well that might be as many as, uh, yeah, it might be nine, ten different penetrations through this aluminum panel so they're all either the wire's been entirely replaced or it's been re-sleeved with this green material. I think you might be able to, to see it there. We can take a closer look here. So there you can see some of the uh, green uh, shrink sleeve I've put on here. Uh, it just shrunk right near the soldering uh, point which is good enough to grip the wire and hold it in place. And of course I checked the other side of the panel to make sure some of this green is, is showing. So uh, Soldering this has been really difficult. This has not been easy stuff to solder. But uh, I think I've got it all pretty good. It looks ugly, but I think electrically it's just fine. Okay, so next thing is putting in this capacitor. And you see, see the uh, hole there. I've got to pass a screw through that hole and then nut down this onto it like that. So that's just going to be a little bit tricky here. You can see lots of the debris that came out of the radio while I was removing the original insulation from those wires before I put on the shrink sleeve. And just another comment here. That's why I've had these copper shields off for quite a while because I knew I was going to be replacing the wires here. So I, while I've had them off, there's been a number of times where I've operated the radio and the result has been god-awful. That's about the best way to put it. Uh, it was pointed out to me that in this style radio there's a much bigger issue about operating it without these shields. Now, normally when I'm doing radio work and I see shields I often think the shield is more for shielding away outside interference or capturing uh, radio frequency stuff uh, that the radio is developing and holding it in place but I, I never or, or preventing it from spreading into the uh, environment, but I never really think about the radio interfering with itself. Now in a, uh, in a super het set, the front end of the radio is running at the tuned radio frequency you're trying to receive, but the rest of the radio is running at a different frequency, uh, 455 typically, for the IF. There's no IF frequency in this radio. But as they build up the, as the radio builds up the strength of the signal, in the case of a superhead, in the IF, especially in the last IF coil, there's a lot of power in there. There's a lot of signal strength in the last IF coil. So it's producing a interference signal, if you like, at 455. But the radio is actually tuned to something in the AM band, like, I don't know, 980. So the 455 can't get back into the front end and come racing through. Remember, the front end is very sensitive, so it's going to pick up stuff. Well, in a super headset, the, the, uh, the, the, the last coil cannot energize the very front end of the radio. So this guy's different. This whole radio, right up until the detector, is running at the received RF frequency. So inside each of these coils is whatever you've tuned the radio to. So let's say it's a megahertz. Okay, fine. So we're tuning in around uh, uh, a, a megahertz in the AM band. Each of these coils now is resonant. The last coil having a fair bit of signal in it. So without these copper covers on here, the last coil with its powerful built up signal strength can simply feed that right back to these other coils, especially the first one. I, I may have these backwards here. No, I think this is the first one. So, because they're sensitive and they're resonant at the same frequency that, that the strong guy is resonating at, unlike a, head, a super headset. So, the fact is, 
probably a lot of the problems I've had while I fiddled around with tuning it and I realized, believe me, the whole time I've been doing that kind of stuff, that's kind of hopeless. The, the, the real purpose of me fiddling around with all those controls and tooling around in that is simply to make discoveries and allow my brain to experience all this stuff so hopefully I get a better and better feel for this radio. So that's what all that's about. I'm not really trying to tune the radio up. I will be soon though. So uh, so that's the thing about this radio. You take off these shields, which are made of copper. You know, that's expensive. So it shows you how important these are. Um, take these shields off and this radio will basically shoot back its signal and just have feedback in here like crazy. So. I don't know if that's really true or not. It sure makes sense to me. Probably probably explains a number of the things that were going on with this radio. Maybe as I made the radio very sensitive and ready to work right, it also became a feedback machine. And so as I'm tuning those controls and this feedback starts up, uh, my conclusion is, well, that's not the right way to tune the radio. But really, it's just because these copper things weren't on there. Okay, enough talk about that. Enough talk about that. Let's put this guy in here. So I cleverly left all these wires pretty much in place. Uh, it's very flexible. This this one here, can you see that? Yeah. This one is actually a lead out of this transformer, so I need to be really careful with this piece of wire. This, this is just a piece of wire soldered here, so. so we can kind of expose the end of it here a little bit better. Clothy? It's not clothy, it's cloth. Or I guess maybe until you've woven the threads together you can't call something cloth, so I don't know. <laughs> Trying to get the string off, I seem to be putting it on. I just want a little bit of bare wire here at the end. pull it off. Okay, that wire looks pretty good for soldering. Let me just nip, nip back the uh, cover. So I'm just to make it a little bit shorter. Crushed it when I pinched it. Come on. Okay, I got a solution for that. Hmm. I'm 
sure that's hard to reach from the other side, that hole there. the hole. So sometimes to locate these things, what I do is I put my finger on one side and then I can perceive where it, it must be. Okay, it's not in a good spot at all. <laughs> yeah. is worse than I thought. <laughs> just just dropping the Is that really the right hole? I don't think that's the right hole. Let me double check it. I have a feeling that's one of the holes for the uh, copper covers. Who am I? Why am I here? So, it's this bigger one. I was on the wrong hole. It's on the wrong hole. Well, that's that's got to be. That's got to be. That's got to be even more difficult. Why does it look threaded? The hole looks threaded to me. The hole should not be threaded. the screw from this side when I was uh, working on the radio before. This is not going to work. Uh, <laughs> just took the nut off and then this screw on its own decided to come out of the hole. Okay, so it's in the hole. There temporarily. This isn't really the best. This really isn't the best, but it's so hold it. It'll keep it from dropping out while I turn the radio over anyway. Those of you who might be squinting every time I put this radio upside down like this, I have checked it very thoroughly on the back where it's touching my bench to make sure there's nothing bad happening. So there's the 
the screw in there. Now my challenge is to get this onto the screw and then get the nut started. Uh, my first challenge is where is the nut? Nut has gone. Yeah. <laughs> yes, these are the real challenges in doing this kind of work. Uh oh, that's bad news. And without thinking, I've set it, down, I've set it down here. Help me find it. nut where would I go? It would go to the asylum. Okay, how many times am I going to look in the same spot here? Oh, son of a gun. Hey, look what I found on the ground. Okay. So, I couldn't put the nut driver on here because there's not enough space for a nut driver to fit. So, the easy, the easy, the easy is not, it's not available. All I gotta do is just get this thing started and I'll be glory bound. Can I get my finger onto that? I can. I can get my finger right on the screw here, which is really helpful. back my old videos to Okay, holding this pliers very tightly. This is really a long shot. Uh oh, hey, what's happened? Uh oh. Did it just desolder itself there? Is that what happened? Nothing broke. I guess just too much wiggling. And this was probably tacked on. This is probably a replacement. I'm going to take a wild guess. That's wild. That's a wild guess. bend this temporarily. Bend it back. Give room for the nut driver. Can have this on the wrong angle at first. Get this get the nut started. Turn at the right angle. Bend it in. You know what? It's screaming no. Don't bend this. Don't bend this. I were to try to bend this a little bit, I run the risk of fracturing the seal in here, which apparently is still good because I tested this capacitor is good. After making it, I saw like a 90 year old here. I better be careful with it. Don't, don't exercise your 90 year olds. So we need that to sit there like that. While I, while I, I, I fiddle with the nut. We also need a little more light on the topic here. How about that? more 
tape. with these is the, the nut's going to rotate very easily at the end here because all I can get with these is a point contact if you think about it because of the angles all you can get is a point contact so what else can I try I've had luck doing this like I'm having luck today. Keep going. Occasionally you start these and they're actually not threaded right. It's easy to knock them backwards too. There we go. Oh, it's on, no doubt about it. Okay, let's put that powerful plier to it here. Now really when I start doing this kind of stuff I look at it and go, oh man this is impossible. How am I ever going to do this? But I, I always find if you just work away at things, keep calm and carry on. Now this has to be pretty tight. Oh, you know what? There's supposed to be a lock washer under there. Ooh! See, I just shouldn't admit to those things. Okay, but I'm going to tighten this guy up. Wow, that's about as tight. That's pretty darn tight. That's pretty darn tight. I suppose I can sink a screwdriver onto the other end of it and tighten down the screw, the screw side. I really want to power it in there, but it's pretty good already. Now what I have to do is... Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. Where'd the... Uh, I don't want to fool with this transformer lead very much. stuff I know it's, it's hard to see but so this is the lead coming right out of this uh, transformer and there's no exposed copper wire it's got to connect up here put it in place and I'm gonna try to nip away you know maybe I can crush away this uh, um, sleeve here to expose the wire But if I put cutters on this, I have a really good chance of cutting a little tiny wire inside. So we'll just see if this will crush. You know what? It's not the same as that other insulation, though. It's not crushing. I really don't want to pull it off, cut it, and stick it back on because uh, I see the wire. A bit of the wire. This could be a really, really fine wire in here. Literally the same wire that. Oh no. Oh, look. It's a stranded wire. So I think this is uh, not nearly as risky as I thought. So what I've done is I cracked away all the uh, all the extruded material or the, 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 the plastic or the rubbery plastic material, and I've still got all that cloth there, which is not going to come away unless I cut it.
one second. I gotta make like three connections onto this, onto this. <laughs> That's not doing very much, is it? Okay, since it's a regular wire, I can afford to take a risk at cutting this a little bit. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> it felt like I cut a wire. Probably dealt with this before I stuck the capacitor back in. Then the conductors. The uh, string doesn't like like it can bend the conductor. Let me get a grip of it here. Bend it. But you see the string doesn't bend with it, so the string stays behind, so then I can get the cutter in there. Nip at it. So I got a little tiny bit there. Looks like badly corroded wire. What's it look like on the screen? Let's see. You can see the uh, powder flying off of it there. I don't think that powder is corrosion. I think that powder is insulation just microscope to really look at this. In case you're wondering what's going on, my tool's getting interfered with there. I couldn't get it into position. either a corrosion product on the conductors coming off or there's look how fine those wires are well that's not wire that's string yeah that's string so if I make a bad connection here let's say I uh, solder this wire in with the other two but in fact no electrical connection occurs to this wire I'm working on. It may be hard for me to realize it when I start running the radio what has gone wrong. I'm not sure there's much more I can do here. Ball magnifier. Well, it looks like it is a bit of corrosion on the uh, on the outside of these wires. See some shininess when I look. I can see that it's reflecting a shiny. That means some bare metal is showing. That's probably good enough right there. That's not bad. Okay, on that one. Now, another wire that's got to go there is this guy. Wow, he's pretty long. Should I cut it back? Which 
this and fit it in. Should probably cut it back. Okay, so we'll get rid of this uh, tinned end. And uh, see if we can't pop off some fair bit of insulation here. nice fresh copper wire that's going to solder easy and try to make this wire adhere to, to these ones rather than the actual terminal. Now there's a, there's a third thing. Isn't there a third thing? Here's the third thing here. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I forgot about the resistor. nearly forgot about the resistor. Okay, hold on. I'm making mistakes. Forgot about the resistor. There's a wire that comes off of here. <laughs> I got I gotta stop it and study up on some stuff here. I'm gonna make terrible mistakes. <laughs> 